everybody, and welcome to episode number 48 of Iron Hammers Live, your weekly PC gaming podcast being broadcast live every single Tuesday, usually at 11pm, but tonight we've decided to do it at 12pm, so that our first guest tonight could be with us. But before that, let me introduce myself. My name is Bobby Gooding, also known throughout the online realm as Iron Hammers, and I'm sure <coughs> everybody knows that by now, but just in case we get a new listener sometime... Uh, why not let me introduce it anyway? Anyhow, joining me today to talk some PC gaming goodness. First up, the guest who we delayed the show for. Feel good about that, man. It is Mr. Tyler, also known as Cool. How the hell are you, buddy? Hopefully, you, you guys didn't have to wait too long for me. No, seen, no, it's all good. <laughs> seeing how it's only. Still the evening time here, whereas it's already Wednesday over there. Yep, it sure is, man. What is the time over there? Out of curiosity. Uh, it's 4:50 p.m. 4:50 p.m. And you're way over on the the west side. Yeah, the upper upper Pacific Northwest of the United States. That place. How is that place treating Basically, you? Basically, the farthest away from you I can be, you know. Pretty much, unless you jump into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Well, that's, that's for uh, next week. Next week, coming straight off an oil rig in the middle of the Pacific. <laughs> I'm going to Korea, man. I'm going to train to become a pro StarCraft player. Do it, man. I'll fucking join you. Although, I'll probably need more than Korea to actually do it. <laughs> Anyhow, also joining us this week, um, who just took in a sharp gasp of air. He, he must be feeling pretty nervous. I'm putting him on the spot. <laughs> Mr. Hardly Dan. You've done it plenty of times before, so I'm sure you're all good. How the hell are you, man? I'm pretty damn good. Sorry about that. It was the uh, mic mouth um, error. There. Mic to mouth <laughs> resuscitation. Yeah, just uh, cigarette on the go. Um, <laughs> that was the sharp <laughs> inhalation. I'm with you, man. Yeah. No worries. You've got another dirty smoker sitting right here, so don't feel <laughs> too bad, man. There's a couple of us. And Brits are outnumbering the Americans today. How do you feel about Hello. that, Tyler? Well, considering how we just uh, had the Fourth of July, we still won the uh, we still won the war, but we haven't. You know, we got a new battle, I guess. <laughs> we didn't surrender to you. We surrendered to the French. Hey, never <laughs> count the French out unless they're fighting the Germans. Then that's like <laughs> yeah. a, a <laughs> yeah. two-minute fight. Then they come a running. <laughs> Anyhow, enough of the uh, history lesson. Let's talk some PC gaming news. What's been happening this week? So, this week in PC Gaming News, we've picked out a story each to talk about, as we always do. Uh, but before we do that, I've got a little bit of a brief announcement to make about Iron Hammers. Uh, I mentioned it before the show, I hope I didn't get anybody too excited. Nothing's going to change, don't panic. Uh, but, I had word today that in the coming weeks, we're going to be featured as one of CVG's websites of the week. Yay! Everybody cheer. Oh, nice. So That's I'm, freaking cool. Man. I'm guessing that everybody in this uh, podcast is familiar with CVG. Yeah. C CVG, C CVG and uh, PC Gamer and I think a few other sites are all linked in that same network. Yeah, I think they're all future publishing. Yep, yeah, anything that's future, so... I'm not sure what else it is. I think Xbox something? I'm not sure, but yeah. Yeah, I think... Uh, Xbox 360 magazine or something like the official yeah. one the future and uh, they do the official yep. Nintendo magazine and all that uh, but anyway if you're not familiar with CVG uh, you can check them out at cvg.co.uk they're a kind of industry insider kind of news place they've got plenty of uh, general news about video games but they seem to go on to the industry side of things like they'll talk about retail different subjects like that you know and they release a industry magazine every week uh, and on the website every week they feature a website of the week uh, which they look at little independent websites such as Iron Hammers and uh, they've got in touch with me today and we're going to be featured, I'm not sure when, it won't be this week, probably not next, I don't know how far in advance they sort these things out but uh, we're going to be one of CVG's websites of the week which I thought was absolutely awesome stuff uh, hopefully Philly will bring a few new people over onto the site a few new people listening to the podcast hopefully um, 
so they've sent me a few questions. I'm doing a little sort of interview thing with them. Uh, I'm going to get it done tomorrow, and hopefully we'll see you up there fairly soon. But uh, I was thoroughly pleased, so thanks to CVG for that. Um, but anyway, away from small time Iron Hammers news, uh, let's go on to some PC gaming news. And Dan, your story this week, what have you gone for? Well, it's kind of two stories wrapped into the big umbrella that is Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> Um, starting off with the rumour, and I've got to stress it is only a rumour, that Windows 8 will be pl able to play 360 games. So oh, and I got, I got something to add to that too. I don't know if you guys saw Engadget this morning, but they had um, an actual screenshot of code in the Microsoft Windows 8 that has an Xbox error. i got to find the post here. but. <laughs> Well, once you're finding that, um, you know, you've got to take it with a bit of a pinch of salt. It comes from a rumor site called uh, TechniLate, and it doesn't actually source as actual news. But it is looking like it may well. It's kind of a no brainer, I guess, for Microsoft thinking, you know, push them all together. And it links very well into the second bit, um, which is the fact that uh, from not too far in the future, all your Microsoft games for Windows Live. It's already done, man. Uh, it's already done. Is it already there? Yep. Yeah. It's already there. Um, featured content. It's going to be on Xbox.com because, you know, they just love to pigeonhole gamers into console gamers. I think none it's... None of us play on the PC. I think it's just them kind of admitting defeat, too. They're kind of like, well, nobody likes this. People bitch when it's implemented into games. So we're just going to roll it into Xbox. Something that's got a bit of a better name. <laughs> yeah. Games for Windows. I think they're just going to have Xbox as their general just gaming slogan, and everything's yeah. going to be tied into one. I think they'll change like it to like uh, Xbox for Windows or something like that. Yes, I've never liked the name Xbox. I, I it was supposed to be Direct Xbox because it, well, yeah, it was just a Direct X PC, and that's I mean that's what it is. Yeah, that's still shite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> going yep. back to. Uh, <laughs> Going back to the PC, playing Xbox games on yeah. Windows 8, uh, do you see it as actually a feasible thing that for them to do? Because, uh, I mean, the Xbox runs on IBM architecture, which is obviously completely different to like a Times 86 architecture that we're using in Windows. Yeah. Well. Um, I can't see that emulating it is going to be that easy, and I can't see that... Um, I don't think they're going to emulate it. I think they're going to have to somehow yeah. hard code it into the OS. Yeah, definitely. They're going to have to use the resources off the Xbox disc and, to run it in the Windows environment. Yeah. And I think it'll only be Microsoft exclusives, to be honest, because, I mean, if you're uh, if you're one of the other third parties, I can't imagine them wanting to be like, oh, well, you know, these console players that buy, let's say you buy, um, I don't know, a Battlefield game for your Xbox, and then they can play it on their PC as well. I don't think that they want to cannibalize their own PC sales because it wouldn't actually be an extra copy sold. It would just be you buy the Xbox copy and you play it on your PC. But would it uh, maybe entice a few... Uh, I mean, generally, console gamers won't be jumping to Windows 8 as soon as it comes out, I would assume. Yeah, I don't know why they would really do this because if you think about how small of a market it'll be, it'll be only people with Windows 8 and it'll only be people with Windows 8 with these hardware specifications that can play these games. And it's like, if you already have an Xbox, why are you going to play it on your desktop PC? I don't I don't really know. And, and my thing is, I don't think they're going to redo any of the, the UI or the controls. It's just, you're going to have to plug an Xbox controller in and just start playing. You're not going to... They're not going to go into actually porting the game over. You know, Indeed. Like, I agree, man. I don't think it's going to be anything that anybody needs to worry about. And by the time that all this launches, we'll already hear about the Xbox 720 or whatever the fuck. Yeah, it's going see, to be that's called. what I was going to say, man. Because uh, you're saying about it being a small user base, being people with Windows 8 and people, whatever. But uh, it's also going to be people that haven't jumped onto the new Xbox bandwagon by the time Windows 8 comes out. Yeah, I mean, I I don't. I have no idea where they're going with this. I think they just want to put everything into one because they're putting the Xbox Live, the actual software, on the operating system on Windows yeah. 8. So, like, people could just, you know, they can chat with their friends from their PC to their Windows phone to their Xbox. 
I mean, I think that's what Microsoft's just trying to do. I don't think they're reaffirming any type of commitment to PC gaming. No way. Quite the opposite, and I'd I, say. Yeah, that, that was kind of the entire point of the, both the threads I chose. It was just the way they just seem to be sidelining PC gaming and trying to maybe even get PC gamers to switch to consoles. Perhaps, man. Um, and also, uh, as Tina's saying there about the new one being out by then, could it be that they're trying to extend the life of the 360 maybe, whereas uh, a lot of the console players who have got their 360s will be buying the new Xbox when it comes out, or close to that time, whereas PC gamers might kind of then see it as an opportunity to go back and check out games they haven't played before maybe, and it could perhaps uh, just increase the longevity of their Xbox. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if that's part of the plan. I mean, they've spent a lot of money, a lot of money getting Kinect out um, as a kind of a device to help increase the longevity of the 360. So, you know, you know, it, 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 it's all about money. If they can get more money from old software, then why the hell not? I mean, the only way they would make more money is if a PC player who doesn't, you know, already actually own an Xbox and has Windows 8 purchases an additional copy or you know they'll, they'll purchase a copy of say Fable or not Fable but let's say Gears of War 3 say you could play that on yeah. Windows 8 I mean that's the only way is they'd make additional money off the licensing fees or you know whatever but, I, I don't know it's just kind of a weird thing I think they're just trying to roll it all into one thing I, I can't see um, PC gamers wanting to go back to Oh, I don't by the time it comes to going back to something like Gears of War 3 which obviously isn't out yet and playing it with the lowered Resolution graphics aren't as good. You know, you're gonna you're gonna want the best gaming experience you can get as a PC gamer it's, most of the it, time. Yeah, and it's literally gonna be an Xbox. You're gonna be playing an Xbox game on your computer. You're not gonna yeah, be it, playing it as it's a, a PC game. It's not. It's not even a port. It's just that game. You're playing Xbox on your PC. That's basically what it is. Yeah, it, and rumor like, has it that a uh, subscription will be required to be able to actually do it in Windows 8. Well, there's a freaking surprise. You got to have, yeah. You have to have the um, the gold subscription is yeah. what the rumor is. And I, I mean, that doesn't surprise me. I think what Microsoft is just trying to do is they're just trying to take all their software, which is what Microsoft really is, and put it across all their platforms. But I don't think there there's really any big initiative to try and convert PC gamers to do or do anything because everybody knows that they're pretty much out of touch with it. And I mean, they have they obviously have to know that nobody really likes anything they have to say or do and they've yeah. kind of just been stumped out of the PC games market yeah. totally which uh, I don't know we'll have to wait and see and see if any more comes yeah. out of it I guess I mean obviously it's still all a rumor but uh, yeah. it's looking like it could be the case and obviously they have they have confirmed that they're definitely integrating Xbox Live in some capacity into the new Windows uh, and what you say about them having their software across multiple platforms, all the, uh, the new interface in Windows 8 which is the same as the Windows Phone and all that no. kind of stuff, it looks like they're trying to kind of unify it, perhaps even uh, take a step in Apple's direction where everything is kind of one yeah. platform, you know. Yeah, well, I can kind of see the point of doing that, but whether or not they'll actually pull it off is another matter. <laughs> yeah. What I yeah. like is the fact that those, uh, those cool little slate things on uh, Windows 8 are all programmed in HTML5, so it will be absolutely simple as hell to make your own. What yeah, I but don't like about it is the fact it looks so much like a, a mobile phone. Yeah, I'm going to turn it off anyway, but or cell phone. <laughs> but that's, in the but that's for the um, that's for the tablets. I mean, yeah, Windows yeah. 8 is going to be a nightmare to kind of when it all comes out. There's going to be two different. Or, or possibly even four different versions of the OS, not including like the the professional versions, because you're going to have the ARM version for tablets. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the x86 <laughs> for PCs. Do you think they'll still release an x86 version? Yeah, I mean that's it's still going to be a desktop OS. Or do you or reckon they'll just ARM, release they a have 60, an ARM OS? Do you reckon they'll just make it 64-bit only though? I think they'll still make a 32-bit one. Do you reckon? Cause, cause yeah. it's, I, I don't think, think they can seven. do that just yet. No, I don't know, man, because current hardware, I mean, it's all 64-bit, you know. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't know. I think they'll still do a 32-bit version, but I just, I don't see it being really popular, but 
you know, I could be wrong, but they're still doing an ARM version and an x86 yeah. version. Or, you know, a normal desktop PC version. Yeah. But if, as far as just putting all their Xbox stuff across all their all their platforms, I think they're just trying to make it more incentive for people to buy Xboxes and buy Windows phones because they want to make it so like people can pick up their Windows phone um, and you know talk to their friends that are sitting on their ass at home playing Xbox. You know they want to give more incentives for more people to buy Microsoft software and including their phones and their operating systems so what they're effectively trying to do is they're just trying to say oh well you got all your friends on xbox well when you're not at home you can use your windows phone to um you know send send messages or see what his current achievements are or, you know blah 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 and then i can work on your pc too so i think that's really all it is i don't i don't really see them trying to push pc games in or out of the way or trying to throw their weight around. Yeah, with that. I think everything else will just carry on exactly the same as it is now. Um, but they'll just have their little things, random things going on. A few people might check it out, and you know, I don't think it will make any big changes at the end of the day. Although it would be kind of interesting uh, if it or, did happen. Or this is Microsoft's solution for when the Xbox 720 or whatever is released. That this is their backwards compatibility solution for Xbox games. Uh, so you can just play on your PC. <laughs> well, yeah, you have a modern PC with Windows 8, which, you know, it assumed if your PC can run Windows 8, it'll be able to run these Xbox games. So you'll be playing the old shit on your PC, and you'll be playing the new stuff on your on your 720. Yeah. I don't know. You can go either way. Maybe they'll put Windows on the 720, and that will be exactly how the backwards compatibility works on the console. You know well, if they put... If they put Windows on 720, um, they're going to have to charge an extra hundred plus dollars for it because that's where Microsoft makes most of their money, is on yeah. just operating system licenses. Yeah, yeah indeed, man. <coughs> and Xbox licenses, for that matter. Yeah, I mean, because I, I just read an article today that they've sold over um, 400 million licenses for Windows 7, and it's been their fastest selling operating system. So. You know, selling licenses really doesn't cost them any like production costs. So all that is just pretty much pure profit. So that's where all their money comes from. Microsoft is a software company. Exactly, it's, it's in the name. Which is why, like, I wish they would have never gotten into Xbox or um, stuff like the Zune and stuff. Like, all their hardware has been kind of eh. You know, their software is good. Like Xbox Live is a good you know interface, but their their hardware is eh. Yeah. I know. I, I guess so far as say Xbox Live is a fantastic interface. I, I think yeah, it is, a, man. Apart they're from a software like, company. Little I mean, niggles they... like only having a hundred friends and stuff like that. But yeah, everything yeah. else works pretty smooth. Um, you know, actually, playing games with other people nine times out of ten, it's perfect. There's never really any issues. Of course, if there are issues, there's nothing you can really do to fix it. But. <laughs> Microsoft's yeah. just late to everything, and then they're just they just drag their feet. Yeah, I mean, how long did it take them with like the Zoom, the portable Zoom device? Uh, and they're like, oh, Apple have got this iPod. That and Apple are already been entrenched. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with Steam and games for Windows. Yeah. Kind of thing. Anyhow, should we move on to our next story that we've got here? Yeah, uh, sure. Let's kick the Microsoft chat uh, out of the podcast. Although it will probably come back. <laughs> she can't get rid of them, man. I swear, I've tried. <laughs> it's all about the EA hate, man. <laughs> it is, man. We'll move on to that in a second. But before we get to there, um, news today comes that the uh, Global Star League, which is, for anybody that's not aware, I'm going to talk StarCraft again. No surprises <laughs> there. Um, it is the biggest sort of, I don't know if you would call it the biggest tournament. I guess it is probably uh, that is going. A regular tournament. They do it every month. Uh, and it's based in Korea and it's absolutely awesome I love it to pieces uh, but the finals for the October GSL are actually going to be held at BlizzCon so uh, BlizzCon every year they hold like a Starcraft tournament or whatever uh, like an invitational but at this year's BlizzCon not only will we get the invitational tournament uh, we will also get the GSL finals being held there at the same time which I would say comes with Tasteless and Artosis at the same time, so that's awesome news. Tyler, as a big Starcraft fan like me, do you think that's awesome news, or would you rather it just I mean, yeah. be 
I think it's great, and I think it's added value for the people that are already there that have paid for all those BlizzCon tickets. And you know, they, a lot of people probably are flying from all over the world to so Indeed. to be able to see a live StarCraft event is awesome. And on top of that, it could create more StarCraft II esports fans. You know, because I mean, probably the majority of the people that go to BlizzCon are WoW fans. Yeah, totally. Um, or they're or they are multiple Blizzard franchise fans like myself, but they're not really into the WoW esports. So if they can experience it. And have an awesome show. I mean, that's just that's just more positives for for esports in general. Indeed, I'd say probably ninety five percent of the people that play Blizzard games have never even thought about esports existing. So uh, having them there at BlizzCon uh, and with the GSO, and it means that there will be a total of three hundred thousand dollars on the line uh, in the two days of October twenty first and twenty second this year. Well, let's hope that. Um the GSL gives us some good finals matches because every single one of their finals have been utterly terrible. And what's funny is, is the NASL finals this past weekend were some of the best I've seen in StarCraft 2 mm -hmm. and their production quality is so much lower but yet they had way better matches than the GSL has ever had which is like the premier StarCraft league. Yeah, it's funny how the GSL finals always seem to uh, just be really bad. <laughs> it doesn't matter who's playing, like you can have the two best players in the world playing and the finals just seem really bad. I don't know. Uh, but I can't wait for BlizzCon even more now. I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. Yeah, as it always is. Uh, so if you want to find out any more about that, people, head to BlizzCon.com. Check it out for yourself. I think it's $39.99 or something to buy the pass to watch the whole of BlizzCon. Uh, but I can pretty much guarantee that the StarCraft stuff will be streamed for nothing if you watch it live. So, uh get some Sweet. StarCraft on and of course just check out the GSO anyway at gomtv.net gomtv.net awesome StarCraft stuff going on there pretty much every single day uh, there's about three hours of StarCraft almost every day it's amazing anyway let's move on to uh, that EA hate you were talking about Tyler what's this uh, new story you've brought to the party this week um, well, it's just kind of a general thing. It's coming from multiple uh, stuff, but there's been something new that's been released, but I'll just kind of preface it here for people who don't know. So like a month or two back, EA or Valve, wh whoever, you know, Crisis, got, Crisis 2 got removed from Steam. Um, EA says it's Valve's fault because uh, they took it off, and Valve have basically, they didn't really say anything, but I guess it's something because EA breached a contract with some DLC. I don't really know. But the main, the main thing I'm trying to get at here is Battlefield 3 is not available on Steam, and it's available for pre-order everywhere else, including EA's own Origin service, um, Direct to Drive, Gamers Gate, um, you know, retail, of course. And, and it's pretty much everywhere. And basically, um, EA is saying that, um, well, it's because Valve won't let us have a, a personal relationship with our customers, is why it's not on there. And to me, that seems like Valve's not willing to give them email addresses or something like that. I don't know if you guys have caught too much wind of this or if I'm just kind of rambling on here. But um, so basically, um, we I don't know if we're going to see Battlefield 3 on Steam or really any more EA games on Steam if they can't come to some sort of agreement, which I don't know. I, I really would say it's bullshit on EA's part because you guys remember uh, Battlefield Bad Company 2. We had pre orders up, we had two different betas on Steam alone, yeah. in addition to Medal of Honor. Like, Medal of Honor was yeah. up for pre-order. We had Medal of Honor betas, which were terrible, which is why I didn't buy that game. <laughs> but <laughs> at the same time, EA, what, what I'm trying to get to is EA is basically pointing the finger at Val and saying, oh, well, they won't let us do this and this. They won't let us have our own auto-updating patcher service um, on Steam when people buy Steam games, and they won't let us have a, a quote-unquote, like, direct relationship with our customers. Which is like, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? So it's all kind of canned PR bullshit. Valve yeah. has yet to say anything, but I really highly doubt that Valve has changed anything to prevent EA from selling their games on Steam. Not at all. Now the only that's thing that's changed is that EA have got their own download service that they're trying to push now, man. I think that is it. And if yeah, EA that's are what gonna... I think. That's why it's bullshit. All this is just total bullshit. Exactly, man. And EA are going to talk about if they're trying to say that Steam won't let them have a direct relationship and they can't have their own update servers and stuff um, is that going to stop them releasing an Xbox 360 version because I guarantee that Microsoft won't let them have a direct relationship oh, yeah. I don't know the, 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 um, the hoops that anyone has to jump through to 
put an update for any game that's released on the 360, and for that matter, on the PS3 the, too. The PS3 as well. Mm -hmm. They're ridiculous. You know, there's strict quality controls, just the same as Steam would want to have, I imagine. And well, it I, comes I, down I to just, see, you know. It, I think it just comes down to you want more control over everything. Yeah, I think they just want to eliminate Steam's cut of the profits. Well, that's well, the thing, know. though, because Steam's cuts of the profits are actually less than the cuts yeah. from the retail from, stores. From retailers, yeah. And they yeah. get the money earlier. Exactly. Uh, there, right. There's such, so many bonuses of actually selling games through Steam. You'd be stupid to not, not to. 30, Unless, 30 course, plus you million had your gamers own. on Steam, and they're talking all this shit like they want to uh, outsell uh, Modern Warfare 3 and compete. Well, um, you know, kicking dirt in the face of PC gamers on their favorite game service, which people have been like screaming, demanding. It's been all across all these different uh, game sites. Like, why is there no Battlefield 3 on Steam? Why did you? Why is Crisis gone? Why, you know, where's Mass Effect 3 pre-orders? It's it's all the same thing. And they want to beat Modern Warfare 3. Well, Modern Warfare 3 is going to get an ad for pre-orders, you know, when they go up on Steam, and there's going to be 30 plus yeah. million people that see it. And you know what's not going to be there? Battlefield 3. Oh well, it's on Direct to Drive. Well, I don't want it on Direct to Drive. I like all my games in one place. You know, it's not about that. I can't just buy it from some other site. It's like, why can't you just let me buy it where I want? I'm still yeah. giving you money. I'm not pirating your game, am I? Well, I'm about to because you won't let me buy it. So. <laughs> Totally, man. It's like if you uh, say if you shopped in some like local small retailer to buy your games or something, and uh, you always went to them instead of say Game over here or GameStop or something over in the US, um, just because they were local, maybe you'd even pay a little bit more, like you do on Steam sometimes. But you get good service when you go into the store, and uh, the guys are friendly and uh, they always look after you. And if you have any problems, they always sort it out straight away, just like Steam does. Um, yeah. And and then suddenly EA say, sorry, we're not um, we're not going to supply our games to small retailers anymore. You can only buy them at GameStop or Game or GameStation or wherever. You know, it's just complete rubbish, man. And it seems to have all stemmed from the fact that they wanted to release the Crisis 2 DLC a day earlier on Origin. I think that was yeah. where it all started. Well, so, I I don't know, like. Because EA, like, if you look at all the EA games on Steam, you look at Dragon Age 2, you look at Mass Effect, all the DLC for those games have never been on Steam. So I don't think it's about selling DLC. I think it more goes to the fact that EA wants to run some other software. Like, I think they're trying to push Origin itself yeah. as a Steam client. So, like, when people grab a disc or whatever from even retail, you're going to have to activate Origin. it through Origin, just like yeah. Steam is. And the reason that Direct to Drive and Gamers Gate don't have to put up with that is because they don't really have a client like Steam. No, no, not at all. They're just websites, basically, aren't they, man? You know, it's no different to really buying it from Amazon, except you don't have to wait for them to send the disc. You can just download well, it straight away. Well, for that matter, straight from Activision. <laughs> straight from Activision. <laughs> well, the, no, the pro is the Activision store, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Activision no. does have a store. Not that you would, but... No. <laughs> Do you think it will stop anybody from buying Battlefield 3 if it's not on Steam? Um, I I already talked to a lot of people that they say they're not going to buy it, and I I believe them because they're the most stubborn PC gamer <laughs> bastards you can think of. That's like, how I know PC a lot of people that aren't going to buy it. it. Whether they eventually cave and do, I mean, sure there'll be those people that do that, but I think it's really actually going to hurt EA sales in the end, and I don't think people nobody is really responding too lightly to this. Well, I tell this day, to no. to I regret to this day that I didn't buy Bad Company 2 through Steam like I just so wish I had it through Steam you know they had it on sale for five dollars so yeah and I nearly I bought know, it sure. a second time um, just to have it on Steam uh, but I thought that was a bit silly of me uh, so I didn't go ahead and do that but uh, like I say it's just <coughs> everything so much easier when you can just have everything on Steam and you can have everything um, all in one place, like you say, even though you can link your games to Steam and stuff, it's just not the same. And, uh, I don't know. You've made me feel really sad talking about the local independent store, because, um, when you were saying about, you know, you go and see them, maybe pay a little bit more, but have that great customer service. Um, where they used to have a fantastic game store, it was called Console Connection, but, you know, they sell PC games as well, and it was, it was just like any other, th any other store. But, um, they, the guys in there, they were gamers. They were brilliant. They knew what...
they knew everyone that went in regularly by name. They knew what you were into. They'd suggest stuff that maybe you hadn't thought of before. And nine times out of ten, they'd be spot on the money. They were brilliant. And oh. they've gone because of game and game station taking all the freaking money. And another thing I will say is about the regional pricing on Steam. I know that people in Europe and the UK kind of get boned on the prices on Steam. That's not actually Valve's fault. That's actually the publisher's fault. So yeah. when EA releases a game on Steam, they set the regional price. So they know Sorry. that they're charging you more, but they're purposely like doing that and then they put it on Origin for what your re or your regional prices would be so you buy it from them. So it's just another way that although you know, a lot of the stuff on the sale recently, have, they've been fantastic prices. Um, yeah, the, when they go on sale, definitely. Indeed, man. Uh, that, that reminds me of another thing. The other day, they were having a sale uh, on Direct Drive, um, and I think it was Mass Effect 2 was like £5 or something. Or $5. Yeah, it was $5 uh, in the States. And I tweeted yep. the link, uh, yep. like retweeted it from Direct Drive, and I had a couple of guys saying, oh, it's not that price in the UK. It's, um, it's like still full price in the UK on direct to drive the UK site and uh, they were kind of getting all up in arms about it but uh, that's not direct to drive's fault at the end of the day because um, uh, as you know we work closely with Gamersgate here at Iron Hammers and uh, they had some sales one time and uh, the, the lady who I speak to who works at Gamersgate in their marketing department she was like really disappointed because they were launching a massive EA sale here in the UK but EA US side of things wouldn't let them on the same prices in the US at the time uh, and it was yeah, totally absolutely. beyond their control there was absolutely nothing they could do about it and they actually um, they have a kind of reward system on Gamersgate where you collect coins for every game you buy and you can then spend them to buy new games so to counteract that uh, Gamersgate actually offered like extra percentage of coins so you were kind of getting your money back in a way so you were getting it for the same price but it was coming like out of their pocket basically at the end of the day um, so Gamersgate were obviously trying to make it work somehow but uh, when people are hating on director driving steam and things like that because of prices like you say it's nothing to do with them whatsoever whoever actually so. uh, makes the game sets the price yeah and one thing I do I do want to just add to that and there's gonna be any evidence of what we just said too. Um, the Red Orchestra 2 pre-orders are gonna go up I don't know if you guys know Red Orchestra you know <laughs> made by Tripwire you know, indie developer, and they're setting regional pricing themselves because they can, and they're setting it the right way. So when you see the pre-orders go up, it's going to be forty dollars U.S. and then whatever the equivalent into uh, pounds or euros will be. Um, so you know, that's just more evidence right there of that. And I, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just think the whole situation between EA and Valve is pretty dumb, especially since uh, EA publishes Valve's uh, retail games, including PC games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like Portal. You know, uh -huh. Portal, the Half-Life series, Orange Box, and Origin sells Valve games. If you go to Origin, you can buy the Orange Box off there. So I, I, I so, so dumb. I don't know, man. It all seems a bit crazy, and it'll be very interesting to see where it actually goes and whether come October fifteenth. Am I right? Um, October twenty fifth. October twenty fifth for ten days. I got the five right. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, exactly whether we can actually buy it on Steam or not uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if EA backed down I wouldn't be surprised if it was just a massive marketing scam that they were trying to make the PC gamers kind of hate on it a little 30, bit 30 plus million people on Steam how can you not just put it on there even for advertising sake you know? it's ridiculous well, I think they're going to get a little bit of extra advertising get a few PC gamers ranting about it like we are uh, maybe um I don't know, hype it up a little bit that it's not going to be on Steam, and then suddenly when it appears on Steam, then EA are going to look like the like angelic side of everything, and they're going to be like, oh, well, Valve have finally yeah. let us do what we want, so we're going to put it on Steam. They're, and they're going to pull an know. Apple. They're, like, when people <laughs> bitch about something about Apple, Apple com or Steve Jobs comes out and he's like, you know, here at Apple, we listen. We listen to you guys. Yeah, totally. This is what we did on the next iPhone. We <laughs> well, the thing it. is, though... Like if they don't actually step back on that, it's not going to dissuade a lot of PC gamers from actually pirating the fucking thing, just no. to play the campaign. No, I wouldn't set up their own at all. Wouldn't be surprised at all. Anyway, on that note, we're going to move into a quick break, and when we come back, uh, we'll be talking about what we've been playing this week. Uh, we'll be talking about what's coming out next week, uh, and we'll 
A couple of question of the week kind of is going to be a bit short because it's a bit late getting it up, but if you haven't answered it yet, uh, head on over to Twitter. We want to know what's your favourite free to play PC game. So go over to Twitter and tweet with the hashtag IHTV and uh, we'll read them all out at the end of the show. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break now. Uh, we'll be back in around about four minutes, I believe. Uh, so we'll see you all guys all soon and see if you can guess which game this song is a remix from. Uh, we'll be right back. Take it easy. Back everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. That was pretty awesome. Free copy of TF2 Coup, it's yours, man. For guessing that one correctly, it was in fact from Super Street Fighter 4. Uh, I love that remix. How about you guys? Did you catch any of it? Well, there was a competition, I'd have bloody entered. Yep, free copy of TF2 <laughs> for anybody that guessed that right. Same goes for every song we ever play in the future, too. It's all me right for uh, going to the top. You, you never them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, <laughs> let's get on and talk about what we've been playing this week, hopefully. So, 
Uh, I'm going to get mine out of the way real quickly here. Uh, this <laughs> week, I haven't played anything. I've had a few games what? of StarCraft. I haven't played anything. Uh, if anyone's noticed that there's been hardly any updates on the website lately, it's because I haven't been at my precious little PC, which is an awful shame, I know. Um, to help. So, yeah. yeah. I know, man, I've been with my daughter, so that explains all. Oh, okay, you're forgiven for that. Yeah, hopefully. I hope so. It's about the only reason that I'll accept. <laughs> yeah, play, that or death. I've got the right one, then. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I did uh, manage to... I just picked up the Frozen Bite bundle a while back and never really played many of the games from it. Uh, so I did have a quick play, like literally like 20 minutes, of Shadowgrounds Survivor. I don't know if any of you guys have played that one. Ah, it was ringing a bell. Wait, what was that have. last part? I missed it. Shadow Ground Survivor. Have you played it at all? From Frozen Boy? Shadow. Let me let me uh put, pull it up in Steam here. <laughs> uh, basically, <laughs> it's a uh, little indie game. Uh, you've probably all heard of uh, Frozen Bite by now. They made Trine, if I'm. Uh, hmm. Not incorrect. Uh, yeah, they had yeah. that sale a little while ago as well. They, they? That was where I picked it up, and they had a bundle yeah. where it was like five pounds or something, or maybe even less than that. Uh, it might have even been pay what you want, uh, <coughs> and uh, I picked it up from there. Uh, had a little play. It's just a top-down shooter. Uh, it's pretty cool. It plays really nicely on the PC. Unfortunately, it's only in uh, like four by three resolution, which is kind of sucky. Yeah. Man. Um. But apart Fine from that, if you've got an old school monitor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it was seemed pretty fun from what I played from it. Uh, kind of, just, it's a bit like Alien Swarm in a way. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at. It. I was gonna say it's like Alien Swarm. It is very similar to Alien Swarm, except there's not so much of the uh, finding key cards to open doors and like maze type stuff. It's more of a you can just run, and get straight through it, and get through the levels and stuff. Uh, but it seemed pretty fun. Um, like I say, I only played about 20 minutes of it, so I can't really comment any more on that. Uh, apart from I enjoyed what I did play, and then the IPL qualifiers came on, and I was like, Starcraft, I'll have that. Um, anyhow, uh, Dan, what have you been playing this week, man? Well, I've been playing um, a couple of games, some more than others. Uh, a bit of Starcraft 2, another one for your list there, Tina. Um, Count them up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, which I picked up on Steam for... Under two pounds. It's a classic old game. It's I think it's back up to a fiver now, but it's still worth having a go on it. The and gameplay you is me brilliant. Up a copy too. Yeah. I did indeed. We got to play it at to some you, point. Dan. Well, yeah, I, I bought it because I needed someone to play it with, and I thought, well, who do I know that plays PC games? Who else oh, could you think yeah. of? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, APB Reloaded. Um, that's still great fun. Um, still enjoying it, and you haven't. Yeah, still enjoying it. I just look at it. But I'm enjoying it. Is it that much different than the original APB? Well, you don't have to buy it anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's free to play, but I mean, like, did they change, like, yeah, they've any sorted of the out a lot problems? of the issues. Yeah, the, um, it's much more balanced. Um, there's new missions, so it's not quite so repetitive as it used to be. Um, it, it seems that I do still have issues with it, but it's, it's, it's a fun game to play. Um, my issues are on the cost of some of the weapons. Because none of the weapons now are like, once you've got them, you've only got them for a certain amount of time, for, like the amount of time you've got the mm. ammo for them. Um, but you can buy weapons to keep forever. But at the moment, they're around about the £40 mark. Holy shit. Yeah, so you're looking at like $75 for a weapon in a game. So, what? That's just, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's just... Do you think that's ridiculous. a deterrent to help with balancing just during the beta to stop so many people buying the weapons? Possibly, but I can't see the people during the beta being that happy if the guns drop down in price when it goes out. That's to, very true. You know, everyone else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's very true, man. Can you uh, buy the same weapon for a brief amount of time for less, or you can like use it for a bit, you unlock it, and use it with your in-game credits, or you can actually buy it with real money and keep it forever. Mm. So, you know, if you really like a gun, then you might consider buying it for half the price, maybe. But, uh, man, I just don't know why they wouldn't, like... If they're, I mean, obviously they're going the microtransaction route because it's free to play, but... Yeah, it's why more wouldn't than they go with transaction. <laughs> yeah, that's more than the 
the original cost of the game, but why wouldn't they just like, I don't know, like make make guns maybe like ten dollars and maybe you know you pay like five dollars for an outfit pack for your character or like something like just go real real small. I, I, I mean, think I don't they're know. just yeah, testing the water at the moment, but you know it's, my rig can kind of run it. I need to sort out the processor in it, um, but it's you know if you've got a fairly good system it's it's worth giving it a lot it's not going to cost you anything to try the thing so give and it a is, go is the uh the the need of a really good rig to run it uh bad coding or is it does it is it like pretty graphically impressive or um yeah once you say got bad the, coding <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> no if, once you, if you've got the settings up it, it's quite it's quite nice um you, you you also need a fairly quick connection as well to you know, stream everything that's going on and everyone's outfits and all the different you, it's so customizable and that's one of the letdowns um the well, one of the problems with it because uh, you know everyone looks so completely different and that has to be downloaded all the time to keep track with the, every single person that's in your instance and all yeah. their vehicles and their weapons and everything else so that kind of can and the music down. as you told me uh, before yeah yeah you can you <laughs> can um you can stream your own music over it it uses um uh, was it Last FM? Oh, it uses Last FM, does it? Yeah, uh, well, it did do on the original. I don't know if it still does. I imagine it does. Um, yeah, you could like pick your song or something like. Yeah, for and you somebody can also. Could hear it. Yeah, you, you can have you can add your, the music from your PC, and as you're driving around, people you drive past will be able to hear it coming out as if you're you know, in a real car driving past them. It's kind of cool. Kind of um, cool, but it's not not cool on your. Uh Bandwidth. It's not a game seller, and it's yeah, it's not <laughs> cool on your bandwidth, but it's it's a fun game. You don't have to do that. You can't. You don't have to broadcast it. You can just have it playing yourself. So, sure. But the other game I've play, been playing a lot, and I kind of hate to mention it here because it's not actually on the PC. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> but it gets my vote for peripheral. Peripheral. Oh, I can't even say it. Controller of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I thought and that was the mouse. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, no. Man, I agree. <laughs> I've been playing Dangerous Hunt 2011 on my 360, uh, and it's a light gun game, and that gun is freaking fantastic. I've been trying to code it to get it to work on my PC to try it out. Um, you know, it'd be great on anything. It would work brilliantly on Portal 2, let alone Counter-Strike or something. Maybe not Counter-Strike because it's a bit awkward to control your movement, but... I really, you know, uh, the, we need more light gun games. Humanity will be better off for more light gun games, and we need more. That's what I say. <laughs> I've I've had my friends round. We've had such a blast just shooting animals. It's I'm not a redneck. I have been called posh, so perhaps that's why I like it. But I do. It's a fantastic game. By the way, man, you've got plenty of light gun games on there. There's like absolutely hundreds. Yeah, but no, of this them. is kind of like a proper light gun. You've seen I showed yeah, you that I picture know. of it. Right, and it's, I know, it looks pretty damn awesome, man. It's got a scope on it, it's got a thumbstick just above you if you're right handed and you've got your right hand on the trigger, there's a there's a thumbstick uh, for your right thumb and there's another one um for your left thumb and you cock you you've got a pump action, kind of shotgun action to reload and there's a thumbstick up up there near the, the end of the barrel. It's ah oh, it's brilliant. Fair play, man. Not brilliant enough to buy a 360 or a PS3 to try it, but it's brilliant. No. You know, get someone that's already got one of those to buy I'm it, and then you can try it. Go to the arcade and spend my quarters on House of the Dead. Yeah, you no, it's, sorted, man. You no, it's, 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 it's better than House of the Dead. Really? I think so, yeah. Does the gun have such awesome feedback mechanism? Well, no, there's pretty much <laughs> no feedback. It's, it's, there's no <laughs> yeah, force feedback or anything on it, but it's it's... It's just an awesome game. Fair play. Apart man. from the story mode, which is shocking. Ah, Such a so cheesy cracks story. are appearing. Cracks are appearing. In that's your... that's the one crack. The story mode is balls. Would anybody here buy a light gun if they made a PC light gun game? That's my question. Uh, uh, nope, not me. Nope, because ah. the mouse would conquer all. Indeed. Uh, yeah, you got to come around here some point, Bobby, and try this game. You'll love it. I would love to, man. I would love to. Yeah, there you go. I've I'm already ordering my plane ticket. <laughs> yeah, man, get over here. We'll have a meet up, and we'll play. What's it called again? 
Dangerous Hunts 2011. Dangerous Hunts. The what, box what is art the, is the, uh, ridiculous. Is it like zombies or is it like... No, it's, it's animals. The story is that a is. Cabela's game? Or like yeah, it a is. Activision yeah. game? I think yeah. my brother has that game. I'm not even joking. I think he has that. It, <laughs> it, the box art's horrific. Um, it's it's got absolutely like a bunch ridiculous. Of forest life on it. Um, no, it's got a big bear coming to attack you. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> nice. But yeah, it, it's it's a work of genius. It's it's almost my game of the year. Really? Oh my god! I think you're that going too far. Uh, no, I'm the not. other Xbox uh, games are. For the amount of fun <laughs> I've had in the past few weeks, I've been playing it. It's everything, and not anything has come close to it. Fair play. Anyway, moving on. Tyler, what have you been playing this week, man? Uh, well, this past week I actually had vacation, so I was just nerding it up during the Steam sales, playing a lot of games. Um, well timed, I did finish, man. <laughs> <laughs> I did finish Fallout New Vegas. Um, you know, I did like it better than Fallout 3. Um, I thought Fallout New Vegas was just better overall. I'm not going to spoil anything, but I just want to say that a lot of the choices that you make in Fallout New Vegas are a lot more gray. There's not so much the good and bad area. Like, a lot of times when you're making decisions in the game that have to do with the story, you really don't know like what is good, what is bad. You just kind of, I guess, go yeah. with what you want. You know, there is no set line on the ground that says, this is good, this is bad, like it is in Fallout 3. And it ended well. I liked it. I liked my ending. Um, good game. I spent about 50 plus hours in it. I did pick that game up off direct to drive for $12.50, and then it activates on Steam, so that Sweet. was awesome. Um, what else? I got uh, Mountain Blade Warband on the Steam sales. Uh, how, how are you, you finding know what that, game man? that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played. Uh, hang on. Yeah, that is the one I played. Yeah, that's not the latest it's one, is it? Paradox. Yeah. Well, it's not the very latest one. The very latest no. one is with fire and sword. Yeah, yeah. But Mountain Blade Warband is like the popular one. It's yeah. Yeah, I played it so, when it very first came out. I played it in the beta as well, man. But uh, I was a little bit. Uh, I wasn't too sure about it, to be fair. How did you find it? Well, it's I, I like was almost gonna like uninstall it after like 20 minutes of playing. I was like, I don't know how anybody can get into this game. But once you kind of get past the graphics, because the graphics are pretty yeah. dated, because the way I can't even describe what type of genre this game is. It's like an RPG where you create your own character, but it's kind of got a strategy element to it because you yeah. go when you're not in combat with other groups and other factions, you're like an over-the-top map of like Europe. And you go and conquer other territories and stuff, kind of like um, a total war game in a way. Yeah, it's, like, it you is know, like total a war, war game. Um, yeah, like, like total war, or kind of like perhaps a little bit like Civilization in a way as well. Like, yeah. Oh, I need to play that again. <laughs> but instead of just doing like, you know, automated combat or whatever, when you get into combat with these other nations or these bandits. Um, you know, you get to play as your character, and you can, you're can you on a horse, you can shoot people with arrows from your horse. You, I mean, I feel like Robin Hood, man. Yeah, man, it's got a really <laughs> awesome feel to it that you don't get from any other game, like that first-person war-type, medieval sort of... Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. I See, I, l I loved the uh, gameplay style of it when I played it, uh, and like the first-person aspect, and the fact that there wasn't really any other game like that out there. Uh, but... There was one thing that got me, and that was just how open it was. Like, it seems to yeah, just really throw open. you in there and just say, "Right now, just do whatever you, can just you want." Do whatever you want. It's it's a true sandbox. Like, totally. It's like a sandbox RPG RTS, which is just the weirdest thing to say, but that's basically what it is. I mean, your your goal is basically you make your character, and you recruit people from villages. Like, hey, you want to join my group of dudes, and then you you pay them a, a weekly wage. And these characters are these people that you recruit in your army of, you know, dudes, they level up with you. And so you kind of get a bigger army and you get uh, bigger notoriety and you go to, you know, different castles and you can pledge your allegiance to one guy and then declare war on another. You know, siege castles, make money, make enemies. And there's really no end of the game. I mean, unless you conquer, like, all the territories, which would be, I mean, I don't know, that would take, like, literally hundreds of hours. Yeah, but totally. For seven fifty, or I think it's thirty dollars on its regular price. I don't. I wouldn't recommend buying it at thirty dollars. But if it no. goes on sale again, if you like those type of games, you know, buy Mountain Blade Warband. And have you played um, any of the multiplayer yet, man? Like, 
Slow. No, I haven't because I was. I'm like, man, I, I, I'm already getting kind of raped in the single player. So yeah, well, I, I found gotta... that uh, because um, I don't know. I'm one of these guys where like I like to have a bit of a sense of a direction in a game. Like I kind of like a game to tell me what to do and where to go. So I didn't really get on all that well with the single player. Like I really couldn't get into it. Like I didn't really feel like I was achieving much because it wasn't setting me out goals. Yeah, achieve. that's what I thought at first too. But then I kind of got. I had a friend who was playing it, who's been playing it for over a hundred hours already, wow. and not at once, of course, but over like the past <laughs> month. But that'd be pretty crazy. Um, but um, he kind of told me what you know what you do, and and then there's also a mod that you can get, which doesn't really change the way it looks or anything. But what it does, it makes the gameplay a little bit more streamlined. So like when you go into cities, you can automatically buy all the food you need for your army. You click like one button, and just it just makes the whole experience a little bit easier and better to get from place to place. But it does take time to get into. But I would recommend it. Um, at least play it for a couple hours. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, man, and I would totally recommend you check out the multiplayer because it's like straight up sort of team deathmatch games. Oh man! But on horseback with swords and arrows and crossbows and yeah, whatever else, man. It's like it's really, really the fun. The sword play is really good. The the, the, the controls are awesome, aren't really they, man? Good in that game. Yeah. Yeah. The blocking. The, the oh, go when ahead. I, when I th uh, first played it, the because uh, it's kind of like mouse movements, isn't it? Like kind of move your mouse to the right to kind of yeah. You you, you uh, move it in a certain direction. You can thrust or you can just do a quick slash if you yeah, just click you your can mouse. Yeah, like parry attacks and things. R right click for block. Um, things like that, and then you put your points into what you want to skill up. You could be good at pull arms, one handers, two handers, or archery, that sort of thing. Yeah, man. See, I thought that uh, that that combat style was going to be really confusing when I first started. But uh, once you actually get into it, it's actually really fluent, and it feel it flows so well with the like you parry an attack and then you swing the sword with the other hand and in the other direction, and it actually feels really good. I I, I was just quite lost on the single player, man. I just couldn't get into it, but uh, yeah, it's definitely it, worth picking up if you pick it up at the right price. Best the best thing I can say to people who would want to try it and would be kind of lost like I was is stay in the the first city that you start in and just. Um, do their little quests that they have and you'll get enough renown and you can make an allegiance with them and once you make an allegiance you'll get enemies and get people trying to attack you and you'll get called to join the king's army and you know basically just go kill other people <laughs> and that's really the most fun of it. This is what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then my other games I've been playing, I bought the Assassin's Creed pack on Steam because I'd never played any Assassin's Creed games because I didn't really care and they always came out late on PC and you know, all the atrocious DRM stories, but yep. I guess I'll save that for another time. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I bought the Assassin's Creed pack on Steam, right? It comes to all three games, um, the first one, the second one, and Brotherhood. So I started up the second one, or I started the first one, and I was like, man, this game is terrible. The first one, played it for about four hours, and I just could not get into it because it kept breaking you in and out of the, you know, the animus. I don't know if you guys yeah, have yeah. played it. Yeah, yeah. And it was just so slow. I'm like, oh my god, I can't play this. And then, <laughs> so I uninstalled it, and I put in the second one, or downloaded the second one, and it is so much better. I'm yeah. into the story. I like Ezio better as the main guy, because he actually has personality, whereas like, yeah. the guy in the first one, Altier, he didn't really do anything. He was just like, yo, I'm a, I'm a cold, hard killer badass. I yeah. don't really say or do anything, but... The second one is actually really good, and I really like what they did with it um, it's so far. It's a great example of a company actually learning something from their first attempt. Yeah, for sure. And developing the game. And from but what I've heard, then, Brotherhood does that all over again, but maybe not to such a, a extreme extent. No. It's... it. Yeah. It, it's... I don't know, it's just a lot better. Like, the whole, the whole kind of concept system that they have in... Uh, and, or sorry, the second one I was about to say, the Brotherhood, is like where you can kind of like, you you have you actually have money or florins, um, for you know I guess Italian currency in that time era, um, and you can kind of upgrade where you live in the villa, and that can bring you in more money, and then, or you can spend that money on weapon upgrades and armor upgrades and stuff like that. There's just a lot of stuff to do, and it, it it's really like Assassin's Creed. They kind of turned it into an open world linear RPG in a way because. Yeah, but the bit of micromanagement chucked in. Yep. yep. And so it takes it puts a little bit more depth into it rather than just going like, oh, it's kind of like a God of War set in, you know, this the 1500s or 14 1400s actually, I think is what this one's set in, but I mean, it's kind of cool just to go and see all the 
definitely like the artwork, not artwork, but just how the, um, what am I saying, like ancient Italy, well it's not ancient, but you see what I'm saying, in that yeah. era, it's kind of cool to go and see it, like all the churches and stuff like that, but I'm having a good time with it, good story so far, um, you know, what can I say, I love slitting people's throats, um, <laughs> always satisfying, yeah, but yeah, those are the games I've been playing, it's kind of long-winded. Oh, and StarCraft 2, but, you know, I, that's just always being played, so I don't even need to Throw mention it Throw it in anymore. there, man. You've got to at least mention it for Tina to tally the, the StarCraft 2 <laughs> mentions. <laughs> oh, man. I think yeah, I've done a few playing StarCraft 2, and I'll just, I'll just be brief in that when I play StarCraft 2 in the ladder, I'm upper diamond, almost masters, and every Terran I face, they either all in with SCVs and Marines on me, or they just play um, Banshees, and they never want to play a straight game. If I play a Protoss, they just about always try to cheese me and rush me. And when I play a Zerg, they actually you know, want to play macro games most of the time. But Do you play a Zerg yourself? Or? No, I play Terran. You play as Terran. I play, yeah, and people just don't like playing against Terran, so they just try to cheese me to get it over with. And <laughs> what, sometimes what is it works. What's the StarCraft 2 thing? I don't think I've ever heard of it. I don't know, <laughs> man. You should I, check I it it's out, like man. this game, you get some units. Um, you're prestiging a lot. You know, you're, you're aiming down <laughs> red dot sites. Um, you're buying map packs, um, and it's the number one entertainment launch in history. So I don't know how you haven't ah. heard of it. Oh wait, no, never mind. That's yeah. Uh, I think so you, this other you game. might have got mixed up there. But talking about yeah. um, StarCraft 2 briefly, we might as well mention it. Uh, nothing to oh, do Starcraft with uh, what we've been playing. Yeah, man, have you heard of it? <laughs> no, is this I am is live sponsored by StarCraft. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be. I'd happily do it for free. Like you don't actually have to pay me. I'll sponsor it by StarCraft too anyway. Um, I need. Yeah, have you heard so about the uh, the new uh, region linking that they're doing? Like I got excited when I first saw it, thinking, <coughs> yeah, cross yeah. region play yeah, at last. Like Europe and Europe, Korea and North America cross play, but that's not what it is. Not at all, man. Basically, it means I can play against people in Russia. Oh, sweet. Me. And so you guys, you guys get a wage on the Cold War. Why I yeah, we can really remember the Cold Alamo War. here in uh, North America. So yeah. <laughs> so basically, they're linking North America with Latin America. I think uh, linking Europe with Russia, and I think they're linking Korea with somebody as well. I'm not sure. To be Taiwan oh, with Taiwan. It's that's a step. the one. It is a step. Uh, kind of. Um, we still can't play. Although the, their uh, motive behind it is to improve matchmaking times rather than to allow us to play with people in Russia. <coughs> ah. Like it's kind I think of it's because. Uh, I was just gonna say I think it's because, you know, um, I was gonna say there's a lot of people that have dropped off playing the game, like more of the casual players. Yeah. So you know the lower the lower pop areas. Well, like need me. Some love. Uh, totally. In the low bronze. Yeah, but, um, like you say, man. Um, <laughs> those are like I can't imagine there's all that many people in Russia still playing it now. So uh, it's a kind of small area anyway compared to the whole of Europe. So it makes sense at the end of the Does day. Does Russia include like Eastern Bloc countries like Ukraine and all that, or is it just literally just Russia? I don't know, man. To be honest, I don't know if <gasps> Ukraine and that would come under the European servers or not. Anyway, I, I think it may be just anywhere where they swill vodka. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so yeah, we'll be getting a whole lot more drunk Russians um, on the EU servers uh, from next week. I think it's oh, going to be rolled it. out with the uh, with the start of season, season three. Season three. Yeah, I'm excited because they're actually going to rotate half the map pool because they have some terrible yeah, maps in there that have been since the beta. My God, get these off station. here. Yeah, crap station is what I like to call it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Uh, do you, have you seen the new maps? Do you think they look pretty cool? Because I think they all look pretty smart, man. Well, you can't. Uh, they're see all they're all them. good, have good you, maps. Have you played them? Yeah, I mean, I haven't played them, but no. they, they look awesome. They do look good, man. Totally. Uh, so yeah, season three of StarCraft launches next week. Can't oh, wait. just before we finish this section, I just remembered something else I played. StarCraft. No, I downloaded <laughs> the uh, Skylands map pack, the map even for uh, Minecraft. Ah, how's that, man? It's freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it, everything's like incredibly high. If you don't change some of your server settings when you're playing multiplayer, I haven't tried it on single player. Uh, you will get keep getting kicked when you fall out because flying won't be enabled. Uh, Fair play. Uh, every it's just like this whole kind of world with floating islands. It's it's got like that bit in um, that Cameron film Avatar or whatever it was called. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like that. Uh, it's brilliant. Um, I just wish I had enough money to build myself a server so I could play it with all my friends. 
Yeah, it'd be awesome to get a server going, man. That would make yeah. it worth playing even more. Definitely. Uh, anyway. Speaking of Minecraft, I was just going to say, have you Go guys ahead. played Terraria or whatever that oh, Minecraft Terraria. kind of rip yeah, off? Dan's been playing it loads. I yeah, haven't played it yet, but I bought, picked it up on Steam for 250 so I was, I was going to play it soon once I get we through don't my mention other games. Right here. <laughs> oh, it's a crack addiction. No, it's, That's it's, what it's, I'm worried about. <laughs> it's it's a fun game. Um, I I know a few people have picked up recently and haven't really kind of understood what the hell's going on and kind of died a lot and then quit. But yeah, if you if you want to um, if you want to have a game on that sometime, hit me up on Steam. Yeah, I've got uh, a spare phase blade that you can have. Just like a yeah. lightsaber, but they can't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> George Lucas would be right at their front door, man. Oh, yeah, exactly. man, and within seconds, like he just appears. He has one of them holograms from a Star from Star Wars. He just appears in your living room, some sort of blue hologram. <laughs> That's just all George Lucas does, man. Is he collects royalty fees off the StarCraft license? The man was makes, genius. He makes he makes shittier movies than he originally did back in the the seventies and eighties. The just man so was a like genius. He something. turned around to the production company, and said, "Let me just have the." money for the merchandise and they were like yeah sure no one's gonna buy that shit and made a shitload off it oh, the man was a genius yeah. purely for that let alone the films he made just purely for just realizing that he can make these little figures and sell them and make money off it now you can resell them for even more How was he's been, i know i've he's still been got buying a from millennium falcon oh i had one man see i had here's my story on star wars toys I had all of the old original Star Wars toys. I got some of them from my cousin and some of them I'd had because uh, my cousin was a bit older than me and the movies came out earlier, obviously. And uh, I had the Millennium Falcon and all the cool stuff, everything that went yeah. with it. And uh, I didn't know they were worth any money. To be honest, I was just a kid and I went to a car boot sale one day. Oh, uh, God. I'm not sure if Tyler will know what a car boot sale is. Considering cars oh, like a garage sale? It's a similar yeah, it's kind of kind of thing, like yeah. A, <laughs> sale, a load of guys turn up in a field up. in cars yeah. with loads of stuff in and sell it out of the back of their car. The trunk, as you would call it. It's basically, I'm getting rid of old shit sale, is really what it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like a mass garage sale. Basically, oh, yeah. In a field. We call them swap meets here, well, some of them. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of swapping for money. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but I had all this Star Wars stuff, and I took it down because I was like, oh, I don't play with this anymore. And like, it was kind of sitting there, and uh, some guy came up to me, and he's like, dude, what do you want for your uh, Star Wars toys? And I was like, oh, I don't know, like, so much for this one or this one or whatever. And he was like, I'll give you a ten off of the whole lot. And I was like, as a little kid, I was like, ten pounds? Think of the sweets I can buy with ten pounds. That'll keep me in pick and mix for a month. <laughs> exactly. I was like, take it, like bagging it all up for him. I was like, yeah, yeah, awesome. And then I kind of found out at a later date that the Millennium Falcon alone was probably worth ten times that. And I was yeah. just kind of like, mm, maybe not. I've so still good. got my Millennium Falcon, um, my X-wing, um, those little s the things they had on Hoth with the harpoon. Got yeah, one yeah, I had that man. <laughs> um, I had a load of those speeder bikes. Yeah, um, I had those too. They had little walky legs on. Yeah, well, no, 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 not those. The the, the, the kind of like the bikes that hovered and you press a button and they kind of exploded. Oh uh, yeah, they all smashed to pieces. <laughs> yeah, but I, I lost the bits for them. I've got no idea where the rest of those have gone. Um, and um, you know when they're escaping Hoth, they had those big transporters. I've got one of them as well. Oh nice. And one. a shitload of characters, but they've all lost their lightsabers. Oh no, that's terrible. Uh, no. How are they going to uh, defend no. themselves? <laughs> exactly. I've got Darth Vader with no lightsaber, just a big slot in his arm. <laughs> Do you have Wicket? I had Wicket. He was my favourite toy out of all of them. Wicket with his little rubber hood thing. That was so cool. No, I didn't have him. I did have the weird woman with the kind of tentacle hairs. Yeah, yeah, I had that one too. <laughs> Anyhow, should we move on and talk about what's coming out next week? Oh, if we must. Why not? Uh, is there anything? <laughs> there, n pretty much no, we could skip there, it really. Pretty much, yeah. Anyhow, let's do that. Incoming! <laughs> so, coming out this week, uh, let's save for the best for last. Uh, we'll start with Seas in Motion, Metro Station DLC, 15th of July. Yeah, it's a uh, kind of SimCity type game which is all about managing traffic and stuff. <laughs> And uh, oh. they're releasing metro stations as downloadable content. 
Uh, it's not that bad of a game if you're into that kind of thing. Um, it sounds like something I might actually like. Yeah, it's actually all right, man. It's not too bad. Some weird it like is. that. Uh, if you're into that sort of thing, it's one of the the best options out there for that one. Um, so, do they have a difference between a, a, a UK and a US version? Because you guys drive on the wrong side of the road? Or what? No, we I just have to drive on the wrong we side of the road. We drive on the anyway. correct side of the road. <laughs> Although, I don't know, man, because literally everywhere else in the world pretty much no, drives on the right side. Do you know why we drive on the left? Uh, I don't. Uh, you would you like me. to know? I would or would you to. like to skip it? Okay. Yeah, well, it all comes from um, the fact that the majority of people are right-handed, and when we used to ride horses, you'd want to be, uh, approach the oncoming person not knowing whether he meant you goodwill or harm. Mm. You'd want your sword arm towards him, so you rode on the left-hand side of the path, and that's all. That's that's what everyone did, and then the French, being French, just said, "Oh no, we don't want to." Follow these English pig dogs, <laughs> and they said it just we like that as well. We should ride on the other side of the path because we are French and we are different. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much what happened. Fair play. So, so it's a bit like the left-handed people being deceitful because if you shook their hand, they could still draw their sword. Well, yeah, kind of. Yeah, it, basically, we rode on that side of the path because we could get the sword out and poke them from further away than we could if we were on the other side. And then but how many people? Still have their sword swords in their cars. I mean, that would be cool. Well, no, that, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> it's everybody. irrelevant now, but that's that's uh, where it all came from. And then the French decided that, that they'd. Um, I could be completely wrong on that, but I'm blaming the French. Talking about this, there's something that I've always wanted to see, which I just want to mention, and I'm sure you guys will agree that it would be absolutely awesome. I'd rather like to do it myself or just see it happen. And it would be, you know, if you're driving down like a little country road, I'm not sure uh, if you get <laughs> yeah. too much of that over in the states. Uh, but you oh, see, the like, there's, there's a lot of land that's unused. <laughs> There'll be like a couple of people on horseback just going down the side of the road, like just yep. like kind of walking along really slowly, and you kind of get stuck behind them in your car, and you get and like, yep. you just overtake them or whatever eventually. Uh, but I want to see somebody on horseback just like galloping at full speed, like through a city or something, just, like <laughs> keeping like, up like with the traffic. Mexico. Yeah, yeah, basically, man. And I'd, I could just, like, I'd love to just have a horse and just like use it for that purpose solely. Ah, oh, it's like, not gonna work. You can't get a out. grip on the tarmac. I guess you surely you could invent some kind of horseshoe that kind of has rubber soles. It's horse something. trainers. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> a pair of Nikes for horses. I don't. Know. <laughs> I just always thought it'd be awesome just to see some horse come caning past and then you're walking down the street. I thought that'd be great. Or, or cops on horses? Do they actually ever chase anybody down? You ever see any high-speed horse chases? <laughs> that would be great. What would be no, great? but I reckon go down some steps, you'll be fine. What would be great uh, is if I was on horseback, caning it down the street, and then the the horseback police officers started chasing me <laughs> on their funny. horses, and there was actually a high-speed police chase on horses solely. And that would be great. Man. Like, jumping over fences and shit to try and get away. <laughs> That'd be so cool, man. You want to come down here? Go on a hunt. <laughs> go on a hunt? Yeah. Can they still do that? I thought that was illegal now. Yeah, as long as the dogs don't kill the fox. <laughs> mm, fair play. Although, can you just kind of say, Oh, man, it's killed it. Oh, well, I mean, what are they going to do? I don't Shoot know. it? Yeah, but I mean, the fox, the dog might just decide to kill it anyway. Like, it's not your fault if the dog does that. Well, I think it kind of is. I know it's my fault if my dog starts worrying sheep. Is it? <laughs> I don't know what he's going to do. Start going, oh, you're, you're woolly, you are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, also, I believe it's finally actually coming out now here in the UK, uh, and that is Dungeons & Dragons Daggerdale. We've said it on about four shows now that it's coming out. Uh, I know. Never did, but on the 15th of July, it comes out on Gamersgate, and just today, literally about two hours before the show started, uh, I was looking on Steam and it's available to buy on Steam in the UK now. So I think we're finally getting it in the UK. Uh, although I've heard pretty rough things about it, so I don't know if it's a good thing or bad. Yeah, it's been getting just torn to pieces. I think our Atari is just kind of part retarded because they first released the <laughs> game. They released the game in retail mm -hmm. uh, like uh, over a month and a half ago in retail in the um, Xbox Live and PSN. And then they came out with the Steam version or a PC download version for the US a month later. 
And now you guys are getting it like two or three weeks later, so I don't I don't really understand what they're doing. I don't know, man. They probably just wanted to give us guys a chance to read the bad reviews and save some money. <laughs> Maybe they were feeling kind. I don't know. That Shit. that is the good point about us having later release dates in general than the guys in the states. Yeah, we yeah. Probably get a bit of a heads That's up. A, yeah. Hey, this is shit, don't buy it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like our guinea pigs. <laughs> and the final game that's apparently coming out this week. Uh, oh, God. I don't know. There's, there's some movie or something uh, that I believe is also coming out. Uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Uh, there's a video game hey, coming out. That guy is out in your neck of the woods, man. This is your guys' is Hollywood right there. Yeah, totally, man. Pretty much. I don't know about the games, though. <laughs> Um, anybody going to be Russian to play that one? Maybe the Russians. Maybe the Russians. <laughs> uh, Russian no. to play everything. All, 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 the, all the tweens and the teens, I guess. Maybe. No, I, I did hear something good. If you go and you go see Harry Potter the movie in theaters, that you will be able to watch the new Batman trailer for the next Batman. I, I heard that. Oh, but sorry it's about my upcoming language, but whoop de fucking do! I'm not going to sit through that entire film <laughs> just to watch a trailer. I was trying, I was trying to give people. <laughs> but a the right trailer time might be first. It. Well, no, it will be first. But you know, you've paid the money to see it. You might as well sit down and mm, numb your ass no. for two hours. Take my money and just let me get away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give them my money. I'll pirate that like if I need to watch. <laughs> I'm sure the trailer will be on YouTube soon enough. Yeah, it'll it'll make its way out. <laughs> yeah, totally. Is this so, uh, yeah, I shan't be playing that. I and I can't believe books. that they will actually sell a single copy of that game on the PC. I don't know why they're releasing it. Like, It's the first time where I've kind of thought that... Um, I mean, I'm always complaining about games that don't come out on the PC, but this is kind of the first time that I've actually thought, actually, you know what, don't bother. Like, Just give it to the consoles <laughs> yeah. and it'll be good. Well, like, we don't care. A couple of these like game to film movies or t whatever these game these games from movies that do come out on the PC they like don't ever show up on Steam and sometimes they're even like uh, a digital retailer exclusive like the terrible Tron game was like a direct to drive exclusive. I see. I didn't even know I, that there was a Tron was game. Like, that, that's right because nobody goes to direct to drive. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> but you must why remember would... the original Tron game. I remember the original one, of course. It was awful. Yeah, it's it like was. if if you <laughs> want to sell any bad. copies, you need to put it on Steam unless you're Blizzard. That's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. Blizzard have no or worries. EA, right? Oh, oh, oh yeah, boy, yeah. You know, EA can do no wrong. Oh no, wait, I've got that backwards. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just starting to feel perhaps glad that it's Activision Blizzard and not EA Blizzard. Believe it or not, now who knows? Anyway, that's what's coming out this week. Um, I think there's only one pick out of that, and unless if it does actually release, um, Dungeons and Dragons Daggerdale. Uh, there's too many D's in that for me. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. Um, derp, da, da, derp, derp, derp. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need to go into that anymore. So uh, we will take a quick break, and when we come back, we will be answering our question of the week, which is, what are your favourite free-to-play video games on the PC? Uh, so once again, if you haven't answered it yet, go over to Twitter and tweet our hashtag. I forgot what it was then. Hashtag IHTV uh, and tell me what's your favourite free to play title and if you feel like it, tell me why too. That'd be nice to know. Um, and we'll be back very shortly. In the meantime, see if you can guess which video game this song is from. And we'll be back in 3 minutes and 7 seconds this time around. So uh, enjoy this one and I'm sure somebody will get this. You can't miss it. Uh, we shall be right back. 